Okay, well, with that, I don't think I have to introduce myself, right? <laughs> uh, so, pleasure to be here with all of you today. Um, my name is Brandon Johnson. I'm the Chief Experience Officer at Terra Zero. I'll give you a little bit of the pitch and then we can jump into the fun stuff. Terra Zero Technologies operates in three primary ways. We build products and services that reduce the barrier to entry for enterprise clients, governments, and consumers to get into interactive worlds and metaverse worlds and experiential environments. We also have an in-house studio that builds the experiences for our enterprise clients to better engage with their customers. And we also do platform development. So we build for decentralized metaverse worlds of all kinds, and we also build we also build the private environments where our clients can better uh, transact, engage with their customers, do safe KYC AML, uh, transact using fiat, and all of that. Um, also, uh, just as a note, um, if anybody has their be real um, while I'm up here, that would be super cool for me. So if anybody gets that, just shout it out and we'll, we'll take a moment. Um, so I'm here to talk about uh, brands and business in the metaverse, and primarily in the context of VR, AR, and XR, and it's a pleasure to share a little bit of the future and how we see it and how all of these technologies are converging to create the next, uh, or the digital layer of reality that we are all steeped in pretty much all the time. If uh, your screen time notification has taught you anything, it's that people are spending most of their time digitally. Uh, if you talk to anybody who's over under 25 and maybe over 25, they're spending as much on their virtual life as they are their real life, and that trend is going to continue. And those are the kinds of uh, things that we see as not just market trends, but opportunities for enterprise groups of all uh, kinds and sizes, 50 to $100 billion market cap companies like Estee Lauder, Bacardi, Molson Coors, PwC, Jimmy John's, Salesforce, all these companies across all sectors that we've been blessed to work with, we see an opportunity for them to reinvent themselves and present themselves and the messages that they want to tell across multiple platforms um, using these metaverse technologies and these interactive technologies, which includes not only the virtual environments, but it includes VR, AR, and XR. So, let's jump into it. Terra Zero has been around for, uh, since I think March of 2021. So we're a very young company. However, uh, we have about 41 employees and full-time, uh, full-time employees and consultants at this point. So we've been able to grow rapidly and we've, uh, you know, we're still seeking high-level talent because not only are we very active, uh, with our global clients and in markets all over the world, but we are expanding to those markets in order to um, better take advantage of all the, uh, all the opportunities and um, everything that's happening across these markets. We have looked to maintain as in-house a model as possible because all of these technologies are coming together. It would be very easy for us to hybridize our model or bring in lots of third-party providers. And that means that we wouldn't be able to give the best experience to our clients and their end customers. Because we're developing everything in-house and because we're building so much of what we're doing in the future in-house, we're going to be that turnkey solution for our clients and customers. We've been able to work with a lot of robust uh, brands and companies in markets all over the world like I was talking about. We offer Metaverse and Web3 strategy, experience development. Uh, we are the advisor partner and the technical partner and the execution partner for a whole host of different companies. We've advised many of the big four. We have elevated relationships with uh, big four audit firms. And like I was saying earlier, we are uh, building, we are getting into platform development that is going to not only champion what we've done across decentralized Metaverse worlds up until this point, but it's going to help us um, hopefully uh, change the rules of the game and set new kinds of trends and set a pace for how people are going to engage with these virtual worlds, each other, and the brands and companies that they love in the future. 
So um, the let's get into some of our builds. For Bacardi's premium bourbon brand, Angel's Envy, we had a distillery tour. And what was really special about that wasn't just the fact that we had a retention time of over 80 minutes or the fact that we had click-through rates on a lot of the interactive entertain and entertainment modules of over 12 to 19%. But um, the people from the brand were really brilliant. And they had this great idea to bring in their cocktail courier kit, which was available for purchase on a landing page ahead of the event so that people could purchase it and it would arrive to their front door by the time of the start of the activation so that when they played the cocktail creation game, they could make the cocktail themselves. But you could also click on the cocktail courier kit and you could route to the uh, e-commerce page for Angel's Envy and you could buy the cocktail courier kit and it would be shipped right to your door. And so that's, that's the next step in a company like Bacardi digitizing their product catalog and creating opportunity, not just for digital goods, but for physical goods as well. We also worked with Jimmy John's to create a build your own sandwich game where we had an inventory module where people could go through this environment and collect uh, different kinds of ingredients, compose their own sandwiches and then upload them. And then the, the uh, sandwiches were voted on and for a limited time, there was actually a meta sandwich that was a real item that could be purchased at participating locations. The real world delivery of that sandwich sold out in about five minutes. So people who are doing the virtual activation are absolutely paying attention when it comes to the physical real world part. For uh, Estee Lauder, we worked with Estee Lauder. Um, we've had many activations with them. And for Metaverse Fashion Week, we brought their all night repair uh, bottle into the metaverse, and uh, this is a best-in-class uh, product for 60 years or something in incredible like that. So they were very cautious about how they were going to bring that into the virtual world. Um, we created a radiance aura that channeled the identity of the product. When people were in the environment, they could interact with the dropper. That digital asset was transferred to them, and they could wear it um, to uh, enhance their look and channel the identity of the All Night Repair product. And you see these avatars running around um, metaverse worlds like Decentraland wearing that Radiance Aura. And so that's sort of this long tail relationship with customers where it's free promotion and branding for longer and longer and longer. So where does this connect with other future technologies? AR, VR, and XR. We've talked a lot about these virtual environments and how they are creating all kinds of opportunities, not only for earned media value, where we've had activations that had 450 um, organic media placements that you know even a $100 billion market cap company is not going to pay for for one single event, um, nor is it the halo effect that these companies have um, it's also an e-commerce play, and it's a new way that they can create a connection with their audiences. Think about the second screen effect. Um, we were talking a little bit about how you get a screen time notification, and every single week for some reason, it seems that I'm up 17% or something like that. I'm suddenly spending seven hours, eight hours, nine hours a day on my phone, which I don't think I'm doing. I do fall asleep next to my phone, and maybe it just plays for a few hours, and that counts, but... Um, I'm just trying to keep up with everything that's going on in the industry. Uh, but think about the second screen effect where if you're sitting at home on your couch on Netflix and watching Netflix, what are you doing? Well, you're going to want a private environment where you as a company have a unity-based world where you have your brand home and people are able to move through that space and engage with you in a very storytelling-focused way where you can be that character or that brand that uh, shows meaningful, emotionally uh, invoked value uh, over a longer period of time so that people are spending an extra 20 or 30 minutes with your brand and it's adding value to what they get out of their day. But that doesn't just have to be on your phone. It doesn't just have to be mobile ready or uh, exist on your iPad or something that you just do on the couch. This is also something that's going to be in store through AR. 
why can't a company with an entire, a, a CPG company with a whole product catalog with thousands and thousands of SKUs, why can't you go to the uh, grocery store and scan your uh, favorite bottle of bourbon or your favorite sandwich item or uh, any kind of item that you like? Why can't you scan that and suddenly, through your phone, have a uh, metaverse or virtual environment that's on a transparent background that you can move through and learn more about the product? Because let's go back to something like, um, let's, let's say that a 21-year-old individual or 22, 23, 24, 25, somebody who all of these companies and all of these markets are trying to lock into because everybody is saying, what is Gen Z doing? What is alpha generation doing? How do we, how do we connect with them? Even though the reality is that you know, everybody is going after all generations and um, older generations as well as younger generations resonate with new digital technologies. That's what we've always learned. So the market opportunity is tremendous, but everybody's trying to figure out what young people are doing. Well, if I am 22 or 23 or 24, or at least I can say this from my life, um, I wasn't ready to drop $80 on a random product in a store. I probably had unhealthy spending habits, and there might be some uh, metaverse experiences or virtual environments coming out over the next few months that are going to teach uh, healthy financial habits. But... Um, maybe I didn't have that in my pocket to spend, but if I could scan a QR code and that could pop a virtual environment into my phone and I could play with something in store, that's creating that relationship. That's creating something where I can explore something and I can then share that with my friends. I can be a champion. I can um, channel that moment and become somebody who has something cool to show to the next person. I can, get, I can then go home, and while I'm on Netflix, I can take out my iPad and I can move through it. And then let's say that that company has many different products. So next time I go to the store, first of all, if I have fun with this virtual environment, I am going to spend that 80 bucks when I go back to the store on that cool product that I learned so much about. Um, but let's say that they have many more products. So then I'm scanning the next QR, and the next QR, and the next QR, and I'm building on top of that environment that came with the first product. Or let's say that um, the environment that jumps into my phone suddenly has, it's a building that suddenly has a second story and then a third story and more gamification elements and more things to do, more ways to connect with my peers, more ways to bring social elements into the mix, more ways to bring commerce elements into the mix. Um, there's, no, there's no secret that for a brand like Estee Lauder, there's a multi-billion dollar beauty play here because think of all the wearables. Think of all the skins and all the video games. Think of, think of how a game like Grand Theft Auto is the most profitable entertainment property of all time. So, you know, there isn't much to do between Grand Theft Auto and a beauty play, but if people under 25, let alone over 25, are spending as much on their virtual life as they are their physical life, well, hasn't... Estee Lauder potentially, or any beauty brand, haven't they potentially doubled their uh, potential uh, value per customer? There's a statistic that's, you know, there's, there's an amount that somebody is going to spend on cosmetics across their lifetime. The question in 2022 going into 23 is, what does that look like for, for virtual assets or virtual items, wearables, skins, all of that? And those are the kinds of environments that Terra Zero is building and procuring and inventing for our enterprise clients, let alone what we're building for consumers to then engage with our clients. Okay, this now is working a little hotter. So, I should continue. Another really important facet of this is the analytics. And why is that? Well, two things have not been so hot. One of them over the last 20 years, and the other in the last two years. We'll cover the 20-year gap first. Analytics. I think it's no secret that a lot of us feel like we have a conversation with a friend, or a loved one, or a family member, and that could be a loved one as well, I guess. 
but, but uh, then suddenly you get an ad for what you were talking about. Or you, you know, type into um, search engines or, or, and, and, and whatnot, and suddenly you're getting tons of ads, and it's, it's just how the system has been functioning. And that's okay, but it's, it's almost like the internet has been selling ourselves back to us, and companies have not had a lot of choices. They've had a lot of options, but it's almost like they've had to just dump their marketing overhead on blasting out and trying to get as many impressions as they can and hoping for the best that they're going to hit their target audience. Well, we see it a little differently. And this is not something that's evident in just metaverse or Web3 or crypto. Um, you know, none of those things are exclusive to each other. We try to stay, Terra Zero tries to stay as far away from crypto as possible. Um, we definitely understand that our clients want to transact in um, dollars, and that's totally fine with us. We also love transacting in dollars. So um, how does that tie back to analytics? We are interested in flipping the script and changing the paradigm. We're more interested in behavioral analytics. The, inver the virtual environments and the environments that can be made for VR and AR and mixed reality, whether you're doing something that is accessible through a desktop computer or your phone or your tablet or through IoT within a real, uh, within a physical store, we're able to see a attendance, um, time spent, we're able to see who looked at what and for how long. So AB product testing has never been more clear. We're able to have very precise um, analytics on click-through rates. And we don't need to take anybody's mother's maiden name or last four of their social in order to do it. What we're doing is we're locking on to the 80-20 paradigm. And we're saying, what does the 20% really like about what you're doing? What does the 80% really like about what you're doing? And we're trying, we, we are, through the, our analytics module that we are um, licensing to Metaverse Worlds and putting into our own builds and putting into our, uh, our, our own private uh, Metaverse World environments that we're building, we are helping create a cleaner pipeline between a company, the products and services they sell, and their ultimate customers. Because why take that scattershot approach and just try to up your impressions and overspend and hope for the best when you could be looking at how people are, and at, at the intense minutia of how people are actually engaging with you, and then refine your approach so that you better increase your engagement and time spent and all of those um, KPIs that really matter and turn into greater customer loyalty and, and ev everything that any company is actually interested in, um, let alone the story that you could wrap all that in in order to create a more emotional uh, and, and more emotionally infused connection with your target audience. The other part is the, what I talked about that has not been so hot for the last two years. Uh, what we've seen with crypto is, uh, for lack of a better word, we haven't had a very good payment system. Um, we need a fiat on-ramp for virtual worlds. We need something that pulls away from just having tokens that um, are securities with immense volatility. We need to continue to see what's going on in the market and embrace the fact that um, companies really need this off their balance sheet right now. We're not afraid of that. So we are building towards these private environments that connect to decentralized, publicly accessible metaverse worlds where we have always on activations like our Terra Zero City. So why can't a company like PwC or Jimmy John's or Estee Lauder or Bacardi or Molson Coors, why can't they have an activation in a metaverse world like Decentraland in a Terra Zero city, and when they move into that environment, if they're going to transact, we can seamlessly port them right into that private environment where the company can have safe KYC AML, they can transact in fiat, and all is well. 
we are absolutely encouraging this model. And not only do we feel that this is going to be better for customers, where it's going to lower the barrier to entry for how people can transact just like uh, how they use Shopify or Apple Pay, um, but we see this as the grand opportunity to bring in the next 10,000 companies to these metaverse VR, AR environments and the next 10 million users, if not more. That's the power of the future of these technologies and what we're building at TerraZero Technologies, and we hope to see you all in the virtual world. Thank you.